Hello, it's Lillian, and we are back again for the second part of this Tower of God lore video about the RAO, and we are going to talk about the top 100 rankers. This video is best seen just after the previous one, so I advise you to go watch it if you haven't seen it, or if you need a fresh reminder. Talk is over, the video will be long, so without further ado, let's start. From now on, we are touching upon the good stuff, and thus I will start giving you more details about the characters notably those who have non-canon lore. I will also talk about those whose ranking has not been revealed, but who may very well be in this top, and in the end we will go over the top 17 of the rankers, where I will detail every single one of them. First and foremost, there are three characters in the top 100 whose exact rankings we don't know. There is Evan Edrock, whose presence in the top 100 may seem strange since his fighting skills do not appear as exceptional, but it has to be noted that he never fought at his maximum capacity. Since Yuri loves fighting, he has a tendency to act as a supporter thus not going too much on the front lines. However, his unique trait is the fact that he is a guide. Guides are very rare and very useful since they can see destiny, a future of sorts, an ability that only an irregular or other particular beings like Emily can have an impact on, as well as guides themselves. It is because of that, that taking guides by surprise in combat is almost impossible. Plus, Evan is not just a simple guide, he is also the chief of the royal guides, who are guides serving the royal family. As such he occupies a pretty important spot, which justifies in great part his ranking. Worth noting as well is that he owns a lot of very useful and seemingly rare items. Then there is Kunmashini Jahad, whose place I believe is largely justified. I already talked about it quite a lot in my video on the princesses of Jahad, so I will try to stay concise. She holds Yellow Mei, she participated in Ene Jahad's capture, which is a major event, she invented the Thunder Lance technique, which is surnamed Ultimate Lance Technique, because it allows its user to take the spear bearer position without even having a spear. This technique allows her to switch from fisherman to spear bearer with ease. She is also extremely strong in these two positions. She is also a John Sulsa, that is to say that she masters electricity. She could be seen as already very talentuous and crazy for fights in her youth when observing her data fight against Data Jihad in the hidden floor. At last the third is Hajin Sung. He is incredibly powerful and very strong in the martial arts, even for a member of the Ha family so much so that he was able to kill an entire branch of the Ha family because of the death of his wife. He is even feared by the slayers and elders from Faj, which allowed Balm to team up with Wang Nan and the others at the beginning of Season 2, despite the reluctance from the higher-ups in Fuji, since he was under Jinsong's protection. Jinsong has immense Shinsu resistance, enough not to be alarmed by the anti-high-ranker weapon El Robina. He is also very old, his birth dating around the Age of Ascension. Thus he could meet and talk to Jihad in his youth, which is extremely rare and shows the extent to which he is old. He also incarnates a symbol of fear among the Ten Great Families, because at some point he used to kill all the members of the Ten Great Families he encountered, as his hatred towards them was so great at the time, but he has calmed down since then. Then, there is a character from the top 100 whose exact ranking is known, it is Arie Hagiferioni Jihad, who is 36th of the rankings. We don't know much about her except that she owns Red October and that she is the only one alongside Urik Mazino to have passed Arie Hon's special test at the 100th floor. Now before transitioning to the top 17, I am going to talk about those I think we could see in the top 100, but for whom we have no concrete proof. First there is Quadrado, whom we ignore everything about except that he accompanied Jihad and his 12 great warriors at the time of the great journey. Thus, during their tower climb, it is known that he engraved stories about the great journey on the weapon Kranos that Yuri uses against Karaka in the name Hunt Station arc, and that Quadrado used this weapon before losing it to Urik Mazino. Given the importance of such a character regarding the ancient lore of the tower, he may surely be within the top 100 and even surely approaching the top 17. There are also the princesses, Haise Jahad, selected to be given a 30-month series, but she refused it and she may have also participated in Ene Jahad's capture, Pondo Jahad who participated in Ene's capture, and An Jahad who owns the Silver January. There's also Alfred Jahad who owns Luminous June and Eri Horn Jahad, the very first princess of Jahad. And just like those latter two are missing in action, they are blue holes. Speaking about blue holes, those like Kel Helm or Garam Jahad may very well have their spot in the top 100 if they were to become active again. Then there's Juchun, whose true name is Ari Chun, one of the three lords of Jahad Empire, his fighting skills are unknown, but the simple fact that he is the direct son of Ari Han must mean he is a very powerful individual, and even then outside that, his position as a lord of the empire suffices to make him extremely influential, since when comes his turn to govern, he finds himself at the top of the empire. We could also mention the slayers from Fog, like Imort or Performer Morseto, 
the elder Sophia Tano, the master of Evankil, whom he briefly evokes, but almost nothing is known about them. There are the family Ha twins, whose parents are Arihan and Ha Yurin, two great family leaders and irregulars. These twins must surely be extremely powerful with such ancestry, and they are also very influential since they share the power of the Ha family. There are also surely members of the Red of the Royal Guard or from Wolhaiksong, like in the top 300, and maybe even core commanders from Jihad Army. At last, for those whose rankings must be extremely close to the top 17, there are only two great family leaders not in this top. The first being the Lopobia family leader, whose first name is unknown by the way, if he even has one. Nothing is known about him, we know that he is very attached to his sons, that he is considered the best anima in the tower. An anima is a special position referring to those who can control shin -he and other creatures. But the Lopo Bia family head is capable of controlling every shin -he and animals of the tower, and even some humans. I will let you imagine how dreadful his abilities are. And besides we can observe it through Yasracha who only has a watered down version of this power, but is already capable of controlling Yama's whole clan. Picture him controlling a barracuda or a killer whale, which are respectively the most violent and strongest of all Shinhus in the tower. Picture him controlling people in a war, making friends of families kill each other to create panic into the enemy lines, it's really a cheat power. Moreover his place at the summit of one of the ten great families, a family which is rather numerous and influential, and which is surely the most fidel to Jihad, giving him an enormous influence in the tower. And at last, the last argument, he is an irregular like all the other ten great family leaders. Thus, why he is surely almost in the top 17, most likely in the top 20. Finally, there is Ari Han, one of the 10 great families, the Ari family's leader. His family is known to be a pacifist one and is as such inconspicuous. Besides, we don't know much, be it about him or his family. We know that he had two children, twins with Ha Yurin, the Ha family leader, and that is the father of one of the three lords of Jihad Empire, Juchen. It can be inferred that he may fight using a needle because all the members of his family do battle that way, contrary to those of the Ariye family who fight using a sword. It can be hypothesized that Ari Han and Ariye Hon are related by blood because of how their names resemble each other and by the family-like relationship globally observed between their two families. If his pacifist side may portray him as a discreet person, he must all the same be extremely powerful and influential using his irregular and ten great family leader statuses. To conclude before going over the top 17, I will do a quick honorable mention for those who were probably in the top 100 but who died. There must have been quite a lot of them in the different wars and incidents which occurred in the tower's history, even if we surely will not know most of them, we still know some of them, especially Jihad princesses in fact. You have Anak Jihad the real one, Rebecca Pon Jihad, Yuni Jihad and Yuram Jihad, I suggest you watch my video on the princesses of Jihad for more info but it can be supposed that the former governor of the second floor was also in this top 100 since it is a floor that is more important than others. We could see Evankel leaving the top 100 while he was 60th just for having lost that job. Besides, Evankel's substitute might also be a new member of the top 100 as well. All things said, after this very big overview, we can at last enter the part you were all waiting for, the top 17. Yonhana she is the Yon family's head, one of the ten great family leaders. She is considered as the most beautiful woman among the great warriors. Even if she was sometimes suspected to not like men, she is in fact quite sweet, gentle with men as with women, which is very rare among the ten great family leaders. Despite this gentleness, it is said that Hana is the most terrifying woman once she is angry, according to the ten great family leaders. It is said that once angered, she even surpasses Hayurin, who is all the same, renowned for having a terrible personality, but it is impossible to confirm since neither of them is currently active. Despite being the head of her family, not a single member of the Yon family shares her blood. They are all born from Yon Ilada because Yon Hana is in fact a maiden. According to a rumor, she couldn't forgive a man with whom she broke up long ago, and thus decided to make a contract with the administrator in order to become a woman unable to feel love towards a member of the opposite sex. Yon Hana is 1 mm69, her sobriquet is Tiklidae, a species of fish. She occupies positions like fisherman and wave controller, and she is also a Huayomsa, meaning that she is a flame wielder, and besides there is a high likelihood that she might be the strongest flame wielder in the tower. Hendo Lok Blood Matter. He is the leader of the Hendo Lok family, one of the ten great families. He is 13 mere 27, yes indeed more than 13 meters. His sobriquet is Long Life Turtle, 
a nickname that could very well be quite appealing to Rak, and which references his defender position in fights and his obsession for immortality. Indeed, according to the non-canon law, when Jihad and his 12 comrades, as well as some tower natives like Quadrado, passed the administrator test at the 100th floor, the administrator offered them all immortality, but among them, V refused, which is why he could kill himself later, and Blood Matter was the only one not to get immortality in the end, despite not knowing the reason why. Blood Matter then asked the administrator how he could become immortal, and the latter gave him the following condition. If you curse all your children and their children to live a short life, you will then obtain immortality by receiving their lifespan. Blood Matter was torn at the idea, but could not overcome his fear of death. Since then, all his children are doomed to a short life, even if in the tower, a short life is worth something like 100 years, and even more for a ranker, but in any case, no child of the Hendo Lok family can live eternally. After that, Blood Matter sired numerous children in order to prolong his lifespan, and thus he is the one who has the greatest number of children among the ten great families. But because of this curse, his family is the least influential of the ten great families and has the smallest number of rankers, for the simple reason that their lifespan is too short for them to get to the top. One of the solutions which permitted to counter this problem is adoption. Thus, the rankers and the most influential members of the Hendo Lok family are adopted children. In any case, Hendo Lok Blood Matter's position as a family head is absolute, and because some among his numerous children lied about their origins before marrying, Blood Matter's blood spread everywhere in the tower. It is said that a large effort is put in place to find those who share his blood. But anyway, I had already explained a bit of all that in the third video about the ten great families. In any case, he is surely the best defender in the tower, and it is said that him and Kun Idan's combination is one of the most powerful tag teams for spear bearers in the whole tower. It was said that they were extremely difficult to stop, but obviously, Blood Matter can also occupy every other position in combat without much difficulty. To conclude a very interesting small detail about this part of the non-canon lore, is that it is said that he has a deep relationship with Han Sung Yu. In any case, the fact that Hendo Lok Blood Matter is so low in the rankings while his family has very little influence, proves that he must be a true monster in fights, all while being almost unkillable. Grace Mercia Luslek. He is the Slayer number 1, and the Living God of Fog, the most dangerous criminal group in the tower. He has numerous surnames people call him the God of Devils, the Demon King, or even the Heretic. But his true nickname is Tigerfish, which is a species of fish that is quite impressive and refers to its tendency to, to throw itself at shiny objects. Luslek is 1M97, we know that he was born on the 80th floor, and that he thus joined Jihad's group during the great journey from this floor on, since it was impossible for tower inhabitants to change floors before the ranker system was put into place by Jihad. Luslek is a fisherman in battle, and his name may very well be a reference to the Romanian soccer player Misea Lucescu. Even though Fog is a threat, his influence does not overcome one of the ten great families or even one of its heads, since they had a special contract with the administrators of the tower. However, Luslek is higher than some family leaders in the rankings, because he represents the absolute darkness of the tower. Just as I said earlier, he is one of the natives who helped Jihad and his twelve companions climb the tower during the era of the Great Journey, starting from the 80th floor. Garam Jihad said in the Floor of Death arc that he was a warlord serving V, one of Jihad's original companions. No one really knows how or why he created Fudge, and his true intentions are not very clear, but it is highly possible that his loyalty towards V and the bonds he made with Arlen Grace drives him to want to kill Jihad, be it for vengeance, or simply by duty, or perhaps a mix of both. His link to Arlen can be observed simply through his name, to which he added the name Grace, from Arlen Grace, just as he did for Baum's Slayer candidate name Juvial Grace, which here makes sense since Baum is Arlen's son. We know very little about him, but his name was mentioned in a pretty familiar manner by Jin Sung Ha, which illustrated that him and Luslek know each other quite well. Luslek seems to be on Baum's side, since he seemed pretty embarrassed when he learned that Karaka plotted to kill Baum during the workshop battle. Moreover, this seems logical given that Baum is Arlen's son, with whom Luslek seemed very close. During Season 3, we learn that he is favorable to Baum confronting Jahad's army during the nest battle, hoping that he will grow through these hurdles, contrary to the elder Sophia Tan, who thinks that these events are beyond him. It is easily deductible that Luslek is one of those who believes the most in Baum's potential, surely because he knows the extent of an irregular's potential, or having been near them before. It could also be, even though nothing has been confirmed yet, that he may be the person with whom Huaryun talked about Bum's official fight against the test ranker, and about his possible impact on the tower. Besides, it might be the case that Huaryun and Luslek have been in talk since the very beginning of the story. 
Much as all the most ancient characters, his power is difficult to evaluate because he has not been active for a long time. He is praised as an incredible warrior. It is said that his massive black hook is capable of stabbing through everything. He is so powerful that by the simple fact of him being active would force one of the ten great family leaders to intervene. It is also very probable that he may be constantly observed by one of the operas, the most powerful lighthouse in the tower, or even by two Peri Peri's eyes of God. Luslek is also without a question one of the most powerful rankers, if we do not count irregulars. Pobidao Gustang. He is the leader of the Pobidao family, one of the ten great families. He is 1M83 tall and occupies the wave controller position in battle. He is also the most famous wave controller and writer in the tower, as well as the founder of the Research Association, an association which I have already mentioned in my video about the 10 great families. His name may come from the Norwegian scientist Gustav Gaudenack. He is indeed a man of great intellect. He introduced himself to Bam as an expert in science and medicine and could indeed heal Rachel from a mortal poison just by looking at her. Aside from certain eccentrics from the workshop, he may also be the individual who knows the most about the tower. The workshop and Gustang are deeply linked together. Maxeth, the creator of the workshop and Gustang often contact each other to share stories. It is also possible that these two are allies and that Maxeth is the person Gustang is talking to during the workshop battle. Because of his vast knowledge, there is hearsay about Gustang knowing a way out of the tower. Hearing these rumors, Urek Mazino stormed his house hoping to learn the way out, but he later left with a headache and told Bekrion that it would be, I quote, easier to dig a way out the tower with a spoon than to learn something from that guy. Gustang is also the person who launched Shinsu research, being intrigued by this thing that did not exist outside the tower. He is also very interested in guides, but this topic is taboo within the research association, and some think that it is because Gustang wants to make all the research on the topic his own purely out of pride. He is also the man who devised the Princesses of Jahad system, as I have already explained in my video on the princesses. It appears that he likes smoking cigarettes, just like we witnessed during the workshop battle, and is very haughty. He is of the opinion that outside irregulars and a few other people, others are nothing but insects that do not even deserve the attention they are given. Him and Eurasia Blossom were once lovers and had a child, Eurasia Eni Jihad. However, after the Eni Jihad incident, they broke up, notably because Eurasia Blossom was opposed to Eni becoming a princess in the first place. After breaking up with her, he started going out with various women in order to fill the big void she represented, sinking his own reputation a bit in the process. With the glasses he wears in order to better see Shinsu and his elegant brown hair he is a very handsome man, what Eurasia Blossom had made a comment about, stating, yes he seems like an ancient and refined book, the kind of book to make you yawn after reading it. It is said that they hate and love each other, and there exist numerous rumors about Gustang and Blossom's relationship. Most of them are false, but it is told that Ene Jahad, who is sealed, may carry official documents holding secrets about these two. Pobidao Gustang is, like any irregular, extremely powerful. He is a genius wave controller, all while being very intelligent, to the point that the members of his family call him all-seeing. While Blossom used to wield Shinsu directly in combat as an offensive wave controller, Gustang used Shinsu to assist her as a support type wave controller. Despite his incredible Shinsu control and battle feats as impressive, his abilities are still inferior to Blossom's. From that fact the saying Gustang looking at Blossom was born, it designates a genius envious of another greater genius. Since then this quote evolved to qualify a man and a woman in a conflictual relationship. Among Gustang's extraordinary skills, there is for instance, erasing memories. Although we don't really know how it works, he was able to erase the memories of all the inhabitants of the floor of death. He was also capable of extracting all the souls White had stolen by a simple gesture. In the end, Gustang seems like one of the great masterminds in Tower of God's story. We know for instance, that it is him who manipulated the entirety of the workshop battle, and maybe of the Hell Trains as well. SIU himself admitted that he was an extremely influential character in the globality of the story, and that his style reminded him of an antagonist of polar movies. He is also the first leader of the ten great families to appear in the story. After stealing the circlet from Jahad's data thanks to the treasure-eating stingray he gave Rachel, Jahad gave the order, among the three orders, which I have already talked about in my video about the Jahad Empire, to exterminate the Pobidao family. Gustang then affirmed his opposition to Jahad at the end of season 2, by declaring the following to Jahad's army. I will talk about our seemingly eternal kingdom, built on adventure and greatness, lies and truths, as well as what will arrive but that everyone chose to ignore, too focused that they were on happiness, health and stability. King of Tower, and my dear friends, a rift has begun to form.
Eurasia Blossom. She is the head of the Eurasia family, one of the 10 great families. She is 1M55 tall, looks like a little girl and loves flashy clothes, hence her nickname Flower Shrimp, which is a species of shrimp. Although Eurasia Blossom is equal to the other family leaders in terms of talent and skills, she didn't involve herself in the politics of the tower since the great journey. Indeed, because of her phenomenal sloth, she does not manage the flaws she rules, nor does she care about her family's flaws, and thus received numerous critics from other family leaders because of that. By the way, it is kind of fun that her and Gustang could have even been together, while their personalities are so opposed to one another. Among the 12 great warriors, Eurasia Blossom was the strongest wave controller. Contrary to Gustang, she was never interested in studying Shinsu, but she is all the same, more talented than him at wielding it. In one of the books Gustang wrote, it is told that Blossom is one of the greatest wave controllers in the tower, but that she cannot teach anyone anything because she doesn't know how she controls Shinsu herself. In battle her way of manipulating Shinsu is very violent and unpredictable. Even the other 10 great family leaders stepped aside when she started going on the offensive. Her mastery of Shinsu is so high that she is capable of killing 99% of the population in a given zone on the fly, simply by accelerating the flow of Shinsu in that zone. That shows how much of a dangerous woman she is. Molich 1 PGR, he is the oldest of the three lords of the Jihad Empire, and he is the one currently leading the empire. Since I already talked about him in my previous video on the Jihad Empire, I will try to stay concise. He is 7M39 tall, has great charisma, in part thanks to his impressive physique of 7M39, far from average then, but also thanks to his great combat prowess. He wields a gigantic halberd, and it is said that he can occupy every position and most of all that he never bothers with positions in battle. His place in the rankings is notably due to his lord rank and overall due to the fact that he is actually leading the empire. In fact he is the man who after Jihad has the most political power in the tower, which is why he is so highly ranked. Tuperit Peri, the family leader of the Tuperi family, one of the 10 great families and surely the most mysterious one, since we know almost nothing about them. I already granted them a total of 10 seconds in my video on the great families, if you remember well, it is telling. In any case we know a bit more about their leader, Tuperit Peri. He is 1M73 tall, and is considered as the first light bearer in the tower's history, even if we ignore how he obtained that title. When he's asked how he became a light bearer, it is said that he answered, the heavens granted me the eyes of God. Well we don't know if it is a legend or not. After the great journey, he became one of the most active family leaders, and with the help of blacksmiths, he created numerous items. He is also the pioneer of the system where the light bearer acts as a communication center for a given team. His most famous creation is the lighthouse opera. Creating an opera requires the highest purity suspendium, and other various extremely rare materials, which is why only three have been made until now. It is rather unlikely that new ones could be made. In theory, the opera extends his user's Shinsu field to infinite range, beyond all reason and limits, which makes it the ultimate dream of every light bearer, since it allows one to see any floor in the tower. It also contains defensive measures which put armor inventories to shame. It has no weak point. Its three holders are Tuperit Peri, Flux, and Jaina Repelista Jihad. However, Tuperit Peri himself does not use it because he prefers using the Eyes of God, which is an even better lighthouse than the opera, even though we know nothing on the topic. The tales of his exploits indicate that he is very knowledgeable, that he is sharp, innovative, and resourceful. It is very likely that Tuperit Peri may have been the strategist of Jihad's party. The fact that he is so well ranked despite US readers never getting a word about his family, be it in the non-canon lore or the webtoon chapters, where the Tuperit Peris is the only 10 great family family that wasn't mentioned even once, and that he occupies no special position within the Jihad empire may seem strange. There must be things we ignore on his person, or concerning his family. Well, let's recognize that his ability to watch any place in the tower constantly is extremely useful, and that if he could create an item as powerful as the opera, he surely created plenty others, and must have a wide array of items as varied as they are powerful, all at his disposal. Ha Yurin, she is the Ha family head, one of the 10 great families, she is 1M90 tall and her sobriquet is Snakehead. She is the very first person in the tower's history to take the scout position. And she also occupies the fisherman position. She is Jin Song Ha's grandmother and Yuri Ha Jihad's great-grandmother. Despite the fact that they did not marry, her and Ari Han had children together, twins, who are the only children that Yurin ever had, which means that the entirety of the Ha family has as much Ha blood as Ari blood in their veins. These twins are in conflict like I explained in my video about the 10 great families, but this is not interesting to Yurin. 
She had other relationships with men since then but never got other children, probably because of the strength of her blood, like it is for Jihad for instance. In spite of her lack of interest in the conflicts within her own family, she seems very interested in Yuri Hajahad's fate, surely because Yuri seems to be Yurin's spitting image, be it physically or mentally. This appreciation towards Yuri is a source of tension since Yuri was imprisoned at the end of season 2. It is said that she has a very aggressive and bold personality, that she's the kind of person to always be on the front lines in battle, even though she seems to have calmed down since then. Her fighting style is very brutal, but also very smart, and she is strong enough to be at the same time a scout and a fisherman. It is said that she breaks through the battlefield with grace and suppleness, and that she is the first to have ever used Shinsu to strengthen her body during fights. However, like the majority of the ten great family leaders, she did not participate in a fight since she was established as a family head. Baek Ryun He is the 77th floor's ruler, one of Walhaik Song's founders, and his current leader, as well as Urek Mazino's best friend. He is one M67 tall and the most talented wave controller in the tower's history. He had received a nickname from the RAO when he became a high ranker, but he refused it. His name comes from a thin silk thread in which he was enveloped when he was discovered for the first time. He is born in the middle area as an orphan and without a residential card, which is supposed to not be allowed, see the first video on the tower. He fled into a forest to isolate himself from the others and became one with the forest. He naturally learned to wield Shinsu and at some time Hedon became interested by Baek Ryun's abilities and chose him as a regular. He climbed the tower very quickly, became a ranker and returned to his forest without being active until he met Uruk Mazino. I will tell you the whole story in detail in the lore video about Walhaik Song, but after this encounter they created Walhaik Song and Arya Hon offered him the 77th floor. Besides, the fact that Baek Ryun learned Shinsu by himself without a contract from the administrator of his floor is strange, so he may have passed a contract unknowingly, or he is an illegitimate child of the ten great families and that he was born with a contract from birth, like it is often the case with them. This hypothesis is rather likely given that a great number of rapes by the members of the Ten Great Families take place in the middle area. Baek Ryun's appearance is the topic of controversy. Normally, he looks like an average young boy, but sometimes he takes the form of a tall man, and some say having seen him appear so tall that he touched the floor's ceiling. Despite the fact that his place in the rankings is due to his influence as the leader of Walhexong and as Urek's best friend, he still is very powerful. He is a wave controller who controls the battlefield, and prefers being a support than attacking directly. He is also apparently very impressive in close quarters. In any case, since he almost never participated in battles with high rankers, his fighting capabilities are not truly confirmed. The 8th and 7th spots are reserved for two people ex equo, Eurasia Ene Jahad and Adori Jahad. I already talked about those two in the video about the princesses of Jahad, so I'll be brief. Ene Jahad was the daughter of two ten great family leaders, Paul Bidao Gustang and Eurasia Blossom, and has also a bit of Jahad blood since she is a princess of Jahad. She was by far the most powerful Jahad princess at her time, and when she became crazy, several high rankers were needed to stop her, and she killed a lot of them in the process, notably princesses of Jahad. It is said that even Jahad himself had to intervene. We know that she is extremely strong and that her power was even recognized by the ten great family leaders. She also had two weapons from the 13-month series, the White February and the Colorless December, which is sealed with her. Adori Jahad is also a princess of Jahad and is currently considered the most powerful and beautiful woman in the tower by a lot of people. Nothing is known about her origin nor the family she could belong to. She is the commander-in-chief of Jahad's army as well as the captain of the Royal Guard. She possesses the Golden November, the only rank S weapon from the 13-month series. She is the only individual, aside from Baum, to have won against a ranker while being a regular there is also a rumor that even before becoming a ranker, she already had reached the level of a high ranker. Adori and Ene Jahad are often compared to one another, but nobody actually knows who is the strongest of the two. This debate is one of the most popular and viral among the rankers as well, and everyone dreams of seeing them fight each other one day, just like us readers. In any case, with this 7th place ex Aequo, Eurasia Ene Jahad and Adori Jahad are the best ranked non-irregular in the tower, just before Baek Ryun. Kun Edan. He is the leader of Kun family, one of the ten great families. He is the father of an unfathomable number of children, as well as the family head with the biggest number of different wives, to the point of surely overcoming a thousand of them. He is 2M27 tall, one of his nicknames is Swordfish, 
This nickname was given to him because of his lance, Mago, which is a legendary lance in his possession. It is a compressed lance and which once completely decompressed is capable of stabbing through half of the tower according to SIU, even though it's surely just an exaggeration. His second surname is the Blue Thunderbolt because of the properties of the Shinsu he wields. Indeed, his Shinsu is really fast and is charged with an incredible electrical power. Numerous people thought his nickname should have been Electric Eel because of that, but he instantaneously manifested his refusal by stating that he would kill any person comparing him to an eel. At last remains his final nickname, the one given by the great and magnificent Rack Wraithraiser, who gave him the honor of being named Electro Turtle. We know that Eden is a quite magnanimous person and that he derives pleasure from fighting, that he is very proud and confident in himself, but he also has a great sense of honor. However, he turns completely apathetic towards his family since he doesn't care at all about the extremely violent internal conflicts raging within his family. Kun Hind Luke, one of the members of the Hidden Groove, used to say that he was the worst father that any child could have and that he cared not whether his children died as long as he had women and alcohol at his disposal. It is known that he is friends with Arie Hon despite the rivalries between their two families, but he is still a little jealous that Arie is ranked higher than him. Other than that, he would like to fight Uruk Mazino because the man pushed him out of the top 5 of the rankings. We also know that he created a special test, which is very special but very surprising as well, whose principle is, the one who fights against him and wins will do what he or she pleases with the Kun family, but no regular ever survived the test. In conclusion, the character of Kunidan was inspired by the Greek god Dionysus of the vine, wine and excesses, folly and immoderation. This is why he loves women, alcohol, or even eating grapes. Kun Edan is a true monster in combat. He is considered the strongest of the ten great family leaders after Arie Hon, or before Enryu's appearance. He was even considered as the best spear bearer in the tower's history, to the point of receiving the title God of Spears. Despite the fact that he is a spear bearer, he is also extremely powerful in close quarters, which allows him to take the fisherman position in battle. In the hidden floor, his data was even able to endure a close combat encounter with Data Jihad, although Data Jihad may surely have not gone at it full force. Among the John Sulsa, that is to say electricity wielders, he is the most powerful in the whole tower. It is also common knowledge that his Shinsu had two other qualities at the time he entered the hidden floor, but he may have developed others with time. The form of his Shinsu is a spear. I will explain all these stories about quality and form in a lore video dedicated to Shinsu which might become a serious pain to write. Added to all his fighting strength, the Kun family he leads is the great family with the Arie family, which has the most influence in the tower, hence his spot in the rankings is totally justified. It is now time to enter the top 5, though starting with... Arie Hon. He is the head of the Arie family, the most influential in the whole tower. He is the ruler of the 100th floor, and his family possesses the highest number of floors among the 10 great families. He himself is referred to as the strongest of the ten great families. He is 1m87 tall, and his sobriquets are White Sword and White Ore. These are references to the White Ore sword in his possession, which is the only sword ever forged by Maxeth, the creator of the workshop. The White Ore is the only rank S plus weapon in the whole tower. I will explain what these ranks mean in a later lore video on weapons, another video that may be quite long. The name of his weapon comes from the Regalacidae. In Tower of Gods universe, it is a legendary eel clad in white steel, white steel eels being a species of Shinher, which is quite common in the tower. Before entering the tower when they still were in the outside world, it is said that he had dual jihad 10 times and lost 10 times, and thus, accepted to become his servant. We also know him as very friendly with Kunidan, just like I explained before. Arie Hon also created a special test on the 100th floor that only two people successfully passed, the first being Urek Mazino, whose test was to endure Arie Hon's attacks for 10 minutes. Urek not only resisted the attacks, but fought him seriously. They were equals during these 10 minutes, but Arie Hon is rumored to have declared after the fight that Uruk Mazino was way better than me. After that, Uruk became the most famous ranker in the whole tower. The reward after passing the test was one of Arie Hon's floors, the 77th, now governed by Bek Ryun and where Wol Hexong sits. The second person to have ever beaten the test is Arie Hagiferioni Jahad, whose reward was said to be very childish and personal. It is still kept secret. The only time we see Arya Hon is during one of Hawking's flashbacks, where we see Arya's back, as he advises his son to become a demon, if he wants to surpass him. Arya Hon is known to be very calm and elegant. He also has very good manners, even during a fight. He is an exceptional swordsman, surely the strongest in the whole tower. It is even said that the mysterious sword technique cannot be described through words. Added to that his rank S plus sword white ore and he may certainly hold unfathomable power. And yet, there are still four men that are superior to him.
There it is for this long part 2. I hope you liked it and that it wasn't too long as I wanted to share all possible information with you. So in the end it makes a big video. But anyway, I won't keep you waiting longer. Don't hesitate to leave a like, share the video, ask me questions in the comments etc. We will be back for the third and last part of this RAO video where we will detail the four highest ranked characters as well as other very influential characters that may have been very well ranked but are not simply because they are not rankers.